Case number seven. A 65-year-old diabetic man is admitted to the hospital for repair of a hip fracture. On post-operative day four, his wife reports that he is confused and cannot remember his name. Evaluation confirms that the patient is inattentive and confused. However, his nurse notes that he was fine both the day before and three, day, three hours earlier. The patient is taking morphine as well as previously prescribed beta blockers and angiotensin converting enzyme inhibitors for hypertension. He is afebrile and his blood pressure is 105 over 51. Relevant laboratory findings are as follows. Sodium, 133 milliequivalents per liter. Calcium, 8.9 milligrams per deciliter. Potassium, 3.9 milliequivalents per liter. Chloride, 99 milliequivalents per liter. Magnesium, 1.9 milligrams per deciliter. Bicarbonate, 25.1 milliequivalents per liter. Phosphate, 3.0 milligrams per deciliter. Blood urea nitrogen, 18 milligrams per deciliter. Creatinine, 1.5 milligrams per deciliter. Glucose, 58 milligrams per deciliter and urinalysis is unremarkable. What is the most likely diagnosis? Delirium. Key features include acute onset, reduced attention, waxing and waning course, disorganized thinking, altered sense of consciousness. How is this condition distinguished from dementia? Acute presentation and a waxing and waning course are found in delirium but not dementia whereas dementia is a chronic presentation. The ability to stay focused is significantly impaired in delirium, whereas patients with dementia generally remain alert. What risk factors are associated with this condition? Prolonged ho hospitalization, pain, dehydration, metabolic and electrolyte disturbances, medication-induced infections, and post-operative state. What drugs most commonly cause this condition? Major classes of drugs that commonly cause delirium are opioids, anticholinergic agents, sedative hypnotics, antihistamine agents, benzodiazepines, and corticosteroids. What are the key appropriate treatments for this condition? The key is to treat the underlying etiology. The first step of the evaluation is a thorough review of the medication list and lab abnormalities that can contribute to delirium and to examine the patient for evidence of infection and pain control. The next step is to reorient the patient.